Is DAW innovation dying? This was a question I saw recently that got me thinking. I mean, I'm just like many others and wish that my DAW would implement features that I see, or I compare to others and think, well, that DAW has had that feature for years now. But when I really thought about this question, is DAW innovation dying? I realized there's kind of two points that have to be considered. First, what do we consider innovation in this context? I mean, there's new updates and new features all the time, so is that not considered innovation? Second, is it just our expectations that have shifted in terms of what types of innovation we expect and how fast we expect them. First off, I think that people confuse DAW innovation with recording technology innovation. When we look back at the history of recording technology, we see that once there's a new medium or a big groundbreaking technology, the initial rise happens with the big iterations and big changes due to customer feedback. But as it continues, the big innovations and changes within that technology get smaller and smaller over time. Now, let's look at the recording innovation and the recording medium of tape. Magnetic tape for sound recording was invented by Fritz Flumer in 1928 in Germany. Flim, flumer, flumer. Probably got that wrong. This was based off the previous invention of the magnetic wire recorder, which was created in 1888. Now think about that. 1888, that's 40 years earlier. This means that from the first main magnetic recording medium, which was wire recording, it took 40 years for a superior innovation in recording technology, the magnetic tape, to be created. Now fast forward to Ampex, with their initial Ampex Model 200, was known to revolutionize the radio broadcast industry with the first delayed radio broadcast in 1948, which was Bing Crosby, and he was a big investor in the company due to his interest in its potential for the radio industry. Now take a look at that. That's 20 years after the initial invention of the magnetic tape for it to be good enough and actually make it mainstream. Now, after tape was created, tape itself stayed roughly the same. Although the technologies and methods used were improving bit by bit, few people would call it innovating because it was still tape and a tape recorder for all intents and purposes. Look at 3M, who is a very well-known producer of magnetic recording tape, one of the best. They produced one of their first mainstream tapes, which was Scotch 111 and 112 in 1948. Then it took them till 1962 to come out with Scotch 201 and 202, which simply gave them 4 dB of signal to noise ratio improvements on the tape. That's 14 years for 4 dB of improvement. Now, while that's good in practice, it doesn't look like much to most people. On the surface, this is still just tape, despite all of the massive innovations under the hood over many years. Along this line of thinking, the next big innovation in recording medium technology was the creation of digital audio workstations, or DAWs. And yes, this skips over digital tape and sequencers, which are a fundamental stepping stone in the development of recording technology, but most people still kind of see them in retrospect as still just tape. One of the first DAWs was Sound Designer, later to become Pro Tools, which began in 1985 and in 1989 was released to the public with the first software-hardware combo the beginning of DSP. Now, the first version of Sound Tools, which required DSP to even run it, was only available on Mac, had a very limited feature set, and was either mono or stereo audio editing. By 1994, which was five years later, if you had enough DSP cards to run it, 16 tracks of audio editing and real-time plugins on the DSP cards as well. Then, by 1997, they were up to 24 tracks of audio editing and 24-bit audio. This means from inception, it took 12 years to get to 24 tracks of audio, which was on par with most 24-track tape recorders at the time, which could still also be linked together to give you even more. Now, obviously, this is a very oversimplified timeline of recording technology, but my point is that it took a while to get seemingly small updates when compared to today's new software and the amount of updates we get every month. Yet, those steps were critical in the development of recording technology as we know it today. Part of the problem, I think, is that people expect change so fast these days. Think of a feature one day and the DAW should have it by next week. This is only exacerbated by the amount of regular updates we get from software companies for the plethora of tools that we have at our fingertips. We basically expect more to be happening, yet most of us don't understand the complexity of software development. Now, to put this in perspective, Les Paul modified his Ampex 300 tape machine in 1950 to create the first iteration of overdubbing, which was called sound 
on sound. Then it took until 1955, five years later, for Ampex to release a feature called Cell Sync, which basically brought practical overdubbing to the masses. That's five years for something that today we think of as so basic. Most people can't even imagine recording without it. One of the complaints today is that DAWs are just copying each other. No one comes up with anything new. They're all just taking features from other DAWs and putting it in their own systems. However, when you really look at it, it is innovating. Innovation, by definition, is the creation, development, and implementation of a new product, process, or service with the aim of implementing efficiency, effectiveness, or competitive advantage. Think back, Ampex didn't come up with the idea of overdubbing. Plus, Paul did and they just copied it. But they made it better and easier to use with their machines. They improved on his idea, just as he had improved on the original tape machine with no overdubbing. But you can see how those two small innovations building on each other revolutionized the recording industry. Now, the innovation in many people's minds gets crowned to Les Paul for coming up with the idea, but it was Ampex that really came up with the technology to bring it to the masses. Now, I'm sure you can see by this example how the line of innovation becomes a little bit fuzzy depending on how you look at it. Is it the innovation of the technology or the innovation of the technique? Both build on each other and go very much hand in hand. Innovation is still happening. It's actually happening at a more tremendous rate than ever before. It's just not as obvious and people are getting a little confused as to what innovation actually is. On the surface, it looks like companies are just taking other people's ideas and implementing them into their own software. However, they are innovating. They're implementing them in their own way and improving upon them for their software's workflow, which then inspires another company to take that and build upon it a little bit more. As far back as we can think, it's always small bits of growth and development that eventually lead to one incremental improvement that is seen from the outside as the truly new innovation, even though it's an incremental innovation in the grand scheme of things. Now, this is not unique to recording technology. Think of the Apple Watch, which was seen as a big innovation for Apple. And for Apple it was, but yet it was an incremental improvement on watches, which we've had for decades, and GPS systems and fitness trackers and various other technologies that weren't new, but they hadn't been put together in this same way before. When you really think about it, it was a small small, logical next step. Same with the iPhone, which was hailed as a world-changing innovation when it was announced back in 2007. However, it was just a slightly different implementation of the smartphones of the day. Roughly the same shape and same size, just no keyboards, very few buttons, and a different look to it. Obviously, this is a very oversimplification, but you get my point. It wasn't brand new, completely out of the blue. It was kind of building on something that was already there. Now, going back to DAWs. DAWs, even 10 years ago, Ago, could only dream of having the features we have today, let alone the improvements that we expect year over year. Now, DAWs were basically invented two decades ago, but remember, it took 3M 20 years to simply improve the noise floor of their tape by 4 dB. The amount of innovation in the last two decades is astronomical. It just depends on how you choose to look at it. Now, I would say that DAW innovation was dying if DAWs simply took other people's features and implemented them the exact same way into their software. But that's not the case. Eventually, I'm sure there will be a seemingly groundbreaking innovation that will happen in recording technology. Frankly, I feel like it's happening every year, but we've just become so numb to it. So we'll just have to see what it really takes to blow people away. So is DAW innovation dying? I would argue no. Innovation is happening more than ever. It just looks a little different than we might expect.